What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Ray Benz, and I am back in my bag. I have another treat today. I'm going to be talking about entries for the surefire strategy, okay? You can use this on any broker, but my broker of choice is going to be Pocket Options. You already know that. So let's jump over to the screen, and uh, I want to draw for you today. I want to draw for you today, all right? We're going to pretend that we're in a market, all right? Look at this right here. I know you guys are familiar with this, those beautiful Hakanashi candles that be popping up on pocket options, right? And they're pushing down like this, and then we get this nice little doji candle, right? That's what we look for when we're trading. But what makes it even better is when we have our strategy connected to it. Now, you know we have the red line that's going to be first near the candles, right? And then we have that blue line. That's going to meet near the candles. And then lastly, that green line. OK. And the reason I have them colored like that is because the red line, I say, signifies, OK, I need to be I need to start watching. I got a doji near the red line. I need to start watching for the reversal. The blue line is like, hmm, I don't care where that doji is. Like if I see price in the blue line, I'm excited. And if I ever see price push outside the green line, it's a surefire trade. I'm taking a two minute trade right there at this spot. Um, and you know clear so look at this when it's coming down like this we're looking for that doji which is this right here and we want to take it at that area because we suspect that the candles are going to start going in the opposite direction okay now I know some people are still struggling with the entry OK, so it is some things that I'm going to do today as far as looking for support and resistance when I trade on pocket options that might help you find those areas. And it's the indicators that have to match that will give you a higher probability of catching that trade as well. OK, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that we have our indicator, the RSI. So I'm going to draw that out on the screen as well. On the RSI indicator, we have that top red line, right? And then at the bottom, I have a teal line. Looks like this. And then I have that green line that, that looks like this right here. All right now, it doesn't move that smooth all the time, but this is naturally if you really just zoom out and look at it, this is how the market will always move in cycles. OK, watch this. Then we have that other indicator, which um, it's not color coordinated, but I'm a color coordinated on here just to help it make sense. So we're going to have the top red line. All right. And then we're going to have a bottom teal line. And then I'm going to make this one yellow so we can know the difference. And it moves a little bit differently. It likes to do stuff like this. That's how it likes to move. But it's, it's the same concept, right? Now, this top indicator is called the R. S I this bottom indicator is called the C C I okay and what is tracking is overbought and oversold areas so look at this when I see this which we're gonna say is our entry this is what we want we want to enter right there I want to see the indicators match that so if the indicator is here the indicator is here and I have an entry. I am taking that trade. OK, now I know some people might be thinking, well, how much time do I want to take? Some people don't like spending five minutes in a trade. OK, this is what I'll say right here. Let's let's debunk that right now. If you're looking at a one minute chart. You should take anywhere between three to five minute trades. I personally like five minutes. That is my favorite. <laughs> okay. And if you're looking at a five minute chart, you should take anywhere between 10 to 15 minute trades. Now, you never know what you're good at seeing. Okay. You might be good at both hopping your demo. And test it. And I don't mean test it for one trade. Hop in a demo for three days and test it. Only take the setup trades when you see like this. Okay. 
only do that. As you get better at seeing, you can modify the way you trade. But look, you want to keep it very simple. Remember, this is a formula. So if something is not going right, you know that you have constants. You don't want to have just, you know, changeable variables all the time. You don't you don't want that. All right. And then it's the same thing if the market is actually going up. OK. We have the market going up with the doji candles. Then I'm sorry with the Hakanashi candles. And then that is a that is a nasty doji. Let me let me erase that. It's funny. Then we get that beautiful doji right here. And then we suspect that the market will start to go in a different direction. Okay. Now it doesn't always happen that pretty. I'm gonna draw the lines too, because I want I want you guys to uh oh. I want you guys to see that. But we have the red line, the blue line and the green line right now sometimes when this is happening it'll happen like this as well all right it'll be less it doesn't matter any direction let's just say down all right we have the market going down like this and then instead of getting a doji candle you get this it doesn't even give you a doji it just starts going the other way okay you do get that sometime too so that that's what you're looking for you're just looking for these entries near the bands right here. That's all you're looking for. And then you want to see the indicators on both. Right. You want to see the indicators on both match up because you want the probability to be high. Now, watch this. Watch this. This this will put everything together. You're not always going to have a setup. You're not always going to have a setup, but it still might be an opportunity to catch a reversal trade, to catch a continuation trade. How can you see that? I have a video called market structure you have to watch that let's say that we have these candles right i'm just going to draw lines to make it quick we have the market that has come to a point and then it has dropped it has dropped it consolidated a little bit right and then it's coming up again drops and then it gets to a previous point let me change this to yellow it gets to a previous point. Uh oh. Look at this. It gets to a previous point. I like to draw little zones. So it gets to a zone. And then it starts to go down again. Or we're not going to say go down. We're going to say that you think that it's going to go down. How can you determine if you want to take that trade or not? Well, if it gets back to this zone, and you see the indicator match. You see the indicator. Let's say we see the indicator up here. We see this indicator at the top. We see the RSI at the top. And we see this entry right here near the Bollinger Bands. If you see that and you look back, I personally would take that trade. Because look, now we're okay. This is obviously a resistance zone. All my indicators are matching. Now I'm, I've identified that I want to take the sale in this situation. Let me find my entry. And I want to get that entry as high as possible. What I don't want to do is take the trade too early because we're only doing five-minute trades. Or especially if you're doing a three-minute trade, you don't want it price to inflate just a little bit higher before it drops because it does that sometime, right? So, you know, that that's how I find it. That That's how I find the trades that I like. So as I take a couple of trades today, I just want you to keep in mind with your entry, that's all we're looking for. That's all. We don't want to rush. We don't want to try to take, you know, when it's looking like this. We don't want to take a candle. Hold on. Let me let me uh, let me turn it red or whatever. Pink. That's cool. You know, you don't want to take this candle for the reversal trade. I do that a lot sometimes. Like I'll be trading and I'm like, oh, I need to wait because I'd be so happy that I see my setup. And I know it happens to you guys too, right? We don't want to take these candles. Well, we do want to take this candle. That's cool. That's a bad, but you know, we want to take that candle going down. But this candle, we, we don't want to take this for the reversal trade. We want to wait. We want to wait for the doji. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click over to my pocket option screen. All right. And um, I want to see if I can actually find some examples. I'm going to mark the charts just so you can see how I look on pocket options. And, and, and before I do that, before I do that, let me do this for you as well, too. All right. When you're trading, you should only be trading anywhere between one to three percent per trade. OK, 
It's okay if you have a hundred dollar account, right? And you're doing two to three dollar trades. That's okay. Some people think that that's not money. Yes, it is. You gotta you gotta think about it like this. Matter of fact, it's time to put my face in the camera. You have to think about it like this. What bank do you know where you can sit your money in it and within a week you can have $140 in it? Not a day. You haven't gotten there yet. $140 in a week because you hit 85% of your trades that you took that week, right? What bank do you know where you can sit $100 in it and six months from now it can be three grand? Now, let's say you start with some posture and you put $1,000 in an account. What bank do you know where you could take a thousand dollars and within six months be somewhere near like five to six thousand dollars? What bank do you know? Do not rush. Don't put multiple entries. Right. That's that's a new rule that I gave myself. I like when I find a really particular setup, I put three, four entries right there. Mm -mm, nope, I'm not doing that. I'm taking the setup once. I'm taking the perfect entry and I'm going to be the sniper. Right. The sniper. One shot. Get it out the way. Compound the account. Get off. That's what I want you to think about. If you understand that you're beating the bank right now, you won't be blowing your account. You won't be putting in multiple trades. You won't be rushing trades. You're going to wait for the setup and take those trades that are comfortable, not the ones where you're like, oh, my God, I just hope price turns around because I got a bad entry. OK, so think about that when you're uh, risking your money on this platform. It's OK to do two to three percent per trade. So just keep that in mind. All right. Let's hop back to the broker right here let's put this over here we got our five minute we're looking at the one uh, one minute chart today so we're going to be doing five minute trades and I'm going to show you guys how you can mark okay look you see this zone right here let's get our tool and the cool thing about this is, is when you mark it it actually stays on the chart I love that about pocket options look at that see that that's a zone Let's go look for something else. Ooh, these 92%. <laughs> these 92% looking delicious right now. Jesus, hold up now. Don't give me. Oh, oh, we got a trade right here. Y'all see? Y'all see this right here? Zone, boom. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. We taking that. That's a five minute trade right there. We are definitely taking that. Let me show you what I see. I'm going to mark it on the screen. All right. Look, that's what I see. That's all I'm looking for. My indicators, look at the indicators coming up, crossing up, off this zone, got the doji candle. That is a textbook trade right there. Wow, that is a textbook trade. Okay, so we saw this. Uh, thank you, Euro Switch Frank. I need you to continue to push up. How beautiful. All right, let's go look at Euro GBP. OK. All right. Look at the indicators. Look at the indicators. I see this zone right here. We're going to mark it. Let's see. All right. Boom. Look at this. Look at this. Y'all see that? So what are we waiting for? You see how we got the doji right there? But the doji, if we'd have been paying attention, let's say we would have saw the doji form and we would have seen this candle open, we would have noticed that, okay, price is still trying to push up. And then our indicators are not quite where we want them just yet. So we're going to wait, but we notice that it's in the zone. Will it respect the zone? We have no clue. We just have to see what will happen. Maybe it's going to inflate a little bit before it decides to drop. But we've identified the zone. That's all we wanted to do is identify the zone, okay? Next trade. Right here, okay. USD switch frank. Uh oh. Uh oh. Y'all see what I see? Let me see. Somewhat in that area. Let's mark it. Let's mark it. Let's put it on a chart. We want to make that a habit. Right, look at that. All the way across. This right here is a little ferocious, though. You see how it pops up? It'll drop all the way to the bottom. So we're going to be careful with that because we definitely don't want to take a trade like this. Like this is a nice setup, but we don't want to take it right here. Then it drops down a little lower before it wants to go. So we're going to let that play out too. All right. USDJPY is trending hard. When it's trending like this, you know, you can take the purple candles. 
you could take the purple candles. Even look at the um, if you look at the indicators, like look, it 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 doesn't it hasn't really been in the uh, oversold section, right? So, you know, I'm careful about that. It's hard to kind of catch trades like this. See, I like it like this. I love when the market, you know. Mm, just beautifulness. I love this right here. Right here, when it starts to trend, it really is disrespecting our strategy. So just keep that in mind. Like if you see something like this, you I mean, you can't enter on the green candles. That's just too risky. I would much rather wait. I would much rather wait for the for the purple candles to exhaust or, or to try to catch the lowest point possible. But even that is kind of hard to do sometimes. So, you know, as I get better in the future and I maybe see something on the indicators that can identify when you can catch a trend trade, that's cool. Until then, it's really just trusting yourself. You see that it's trending. Maybe you can identify an Elliott wave. If you don't know what an Elliott wave is, I can make a video talking about Elliott waves. But, um, you know, maybe you can identify that and you can hop in those trades. But I'm not the best at that one. I'm not the best at those. All right. Let's see. Let's look. OK, we notice it came to this area a while back. It's actually a lot of structure in this. It's kind of bouncing between these two points right here. So I'm not going to mark that one, though, because it doesn't look appeasing to me. OK. Indicators are looking good. I'm going to put a zone on this one. We're going to watch this one, see what happened. Look at this. Okay. Oh, our Euro shift fell out of profit. We're about to go check that, see what's happening. Let's see. So we were in profit for like four minutes on that one. So let's see if it turned around on us. Here we go. Okay. So I got that zone. Let's see what happens. Let's go check our beautiful trade. What happened? Ooh, we. Okay. So it came back to that area, dropped pretty hard. We got 34 seconds left on that trade. Came back to the same zone. Same zone. And that happens sometimes. That Now, that is a risk about trading on these low time frames, too. 10-minute trades, you probably don't have to worry about that a lot. But, okay. So, that spiked us out right there. But I do think that this is going to continue to go back up, though. But I'm going to see. I'm not going to. I'm going to wait for this to doji again. And then we're going to take that trade one more time. But you see how it went up? Beautiful trade. Came back and kind of spiked us. But we do want to enter right here so at the beginning of this candle so that first trade is a loss but the concept was there so we're gonna wait and see euro chef we're gonna give it some time we're not gonna force it let's go look at some stuff on some stocks ninety two percent let's zoom out who's looking at this last night that's why this was right here Okay, look at this. Okay, it's hit this point three different times. That's a good zone. So we're going to mark that. We're going to mark that right there. Let's drag this box down. It hit this point three different times. So that's what we're looking for. It gets in this area right here. It kind of likes to play before it drops. I would be foolish to take it right here. Now, if it pops up a little bit, I'm cool. But we've identified that on Bank of America. I don't want to miss my Euro Chef trade though. Let's 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 pop back over there. Let's pop back over there, see what's going on. Okay. It's trending hard too. Broke through that zone right there. Mm, this was beautiful. Wow, we missed that one. Okay. <laughs> we take the one that turned on us, but we missed that one. Okay, this is the trend right here, so I'm not going to touch the trend. I'm definitely not touching that trend. Zoom out, see what's going on here. All right, 
back to the stocks. What's going on on Facebook? Oof, look at that. Oh, okay, look at this. When I see, when I see this right here, when it's like nothing, when it's nothing on the one minute, you can kind of jump up to the five minute chart, see if you can find like a zone right here. Oh, this is a mean doji. Ooh, this is a mean one. Okay. All right, so on the five minute, we're going to bump this up to 10. Just to give ourselves that time. And we're going to take that trade right here on Facebook. I like that. You see it? You see how far back it was? On the one minute, we wouldn't see this. But what we can do is we can mark that right here. Look. We could do it just like that. Boom. In our zone. In our zone. Let's get it. All right. So that's Facebook. Let's go back to our one minute chart. If we do that, look now the zone right here. How beautiful. We got 10 minutes on that trade. Plenty of time for it to continue to push. Let's change back to our five minute setup. All right, let's see. Oh, this is beautiful. I ain't gonna lie, this is beautiful. Look at this. Y'all should be able to see it by now. Y'all should be able to see it. I'm doing the same thing over and over. Right there. Went into it, respect, respect. We got a doji on the one minute. Pop up, we can even pop up on the five minute and see what's happening. Let's see what's happening on the five minute. You see it? Look at that. We got two minutes left on this five minute candle. All right. We want to get a five minute entry. I already know what's going on in the one minute. Starting to reject. All right. Let's go back to the one minute. Okay. go we're gonna take that oh I thought I wanted to jump down just a little bit oh it didn't put it in okay pocket options tripping there we go I take that that's another thing some people don't like about pocket options they think that the delay is just bad but that, that's not my experience I feel like if you catch as long as you catch in a certain area you'll usually be fine so but we'll see what happens we got five minutes on that trade we want to see that reject. Let me see if I can find one more and then I'll let the video play out. One more trade that I like. I see this is coming down to a zone that it kind of bounced off of earlier. Not quite there yet. Not there. Hmm. Y'all see that? This looks like a good good zone right here. Look. Yeah. That's a good zone right there. And then look, it's bouncing right here too. This is a pivot point. I'm gonna let me put a line right there. I'm gonna put a line. It's right here. Make that thicker. Boom. Look how it's bouncing between these two points. So if you take a trade in the middle, it's like <laughs> it's like gambling. <laughs> it's really like gambling. So all right. Let's see if we can find another one. Find another one. We got this one on a uptrend for sure. It's kind of playing around right here like it wants to switch. Just gonna let that play. McDonald's, Johnson, Johnson. All right, now we got too many 92s to be trading anything below uh, 85. So we're gonna leave that alone. Let's go back to our currencies. Let me see with the euro. Okay, yeah, that just continued to go. Continue to go. I guess what you can say too is if you see your trade turn around and it spikes you out then I wouldn't take a full trade amount, but take a continuation trade, maybe for 1% of your account. Just take a continuation trade, see what happens, because look, it, it just came back. 
When it's a reversal, it's a reversal. If it's not a reversal, typically it'll do that. It'll just obliterate your trade. But you can catch some of your profit back if you wanted to do that. I wouldn't make that a habit, but if that's something that you notice uh, when you're trading, that can help you, you know, maintain some of your profit. I know we got this right here coming back. It broke this zone. So now it's retesting. This is called a retest, guys. This is called a retest. So it broke through. Now it's coming for a retest. Now we can use this. This is not a resistance anymore. It can be used as a support. So that's what we're looking for as a support. Euro GBP, we want to see what it does to this zone area right here. If it's going to continue to trend up, we can potentially catch us a trade in the up direction for five minutes. We're going to see. Um, let's go check on our other trades really quick. I know they're in, well, they're in profit right now, so we'll let them play out. I want to see if Euro GBP respects this area. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Y'all see it? It looks like it wants to respect it. We're going to see. By the way, you should drink plenty, plenty of water. Ah, delicious. All right, baby. Give me the doji at this zone. We're going to take the five-minute reversal. We got 44, let me see, 41 seconds. Ooh, HP just fell out of profit at the last second, too. And now it's back in profit. Oh, yeah, it's over there playing. Look at that. 30 seconds. Jesus, y'all see that? Look at look over here on this side of the screen. See, now I'm curious, but I don't want to miss this trade either. But I am curious. We got 18 seconds on that trade. <laughs> That was our five minute trade too. We got 12 seconds. Oh my God. Nine seconds. We're gonna let it play out. Oh yeah, stay green. Big greens. Beautiful. All right, we won that trade. So that was playing by our entry a lot, but we got it. Now I'm waiting for this. I wanna see the doji right here. I'm waiting for my entry. Facebook should be deep in profit. Facebook should be deep in profit. Okay, y'all see, y'all see the doji? We got the doji by the zone right here. Twenty seconds left. Maybe if it drops just a little lower, we got five minutes right here. Fifteen seconds. We're gonna go ahead and enter this trade right here for continuation up. I do think it's gonna respect that zone and continue on this little uptrend, which will be beautiful. So we'll take that trade, and I'll call that for the last trade of the day for me at least. And then uh, let's go check on our Facebook trade. Oof, our Facebook trade was a snipe. See that 10, man, yo, those 10-minute trades. Those 10-minute trades, man, I'm telling you, it's just something about them. It's something about the 10-minute. I don't know what it is, but people just don't like it. They don't like it. They just don't like it. I don't get it. Anyways, we're going to stick to these little five minutes. Ooh, let's see what happened. It went all the way down to the bottom of the zone. Was not expecting that. Let's get it. Let's get it. Respect it. And we're going to let these play out, and then I'll give some final thoughts on the video. Let me see. Something I think I should lace people up on because I think a lot of people are asking. Uh, let me put my face back in the camera. All right, look, so I've seen a couple of people on the channel saying, hey, can I do like copy trading or, you know, do you have like free telegram groups and stuff like that? Look, guys, I am the type of person where I don't really like giving people the fish. I would much rather give you the fishing pole and teach you how to catch your own fish. OK, so I mean, no disrespect when I tell you I don't. All right. I do have an organization. I do have a team of traders who want to be profitable and uh, we're building organizations all over the world, actually. But, um, you know, I'm not I'm not a copy trader. I'm not a person that's like, hey, yeah, copy my account. You don't have to learn anything, make money. Absolutely not. I'm the person that's going to have you and your family say, hey, man, everybody give me 100 bucks. I'm about to run it up. That's me. 
that's me. So um, no no disrespect on that. But, you know, if you ask if you can copy trade or stuff like that, I might not respond or I might just tell you in a respectful way that I don't do that. Um, but when it comes to your trading account, you cannot be scared, though. You can't be putting no fifty dollars on an account thinking by next month you can quit your job. That's just not going to happen. If you got the funds in place, if you do have anywhere between five hundred to a thousand dollars that you can put on your account. Right do that matter of fact even if you have to make a new account even if you have to go get a new email and do all that do that whole process over again i'm telling you now we just cleared that other trade i'm telling you now um please please like do that and 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 run, run it up run it up but make a new account like if you need to start fresh that's what i'm saying take 500 whatever make a new pocket options account and, and follow the rules of trading. Don't blow your account. I see a lot of people saying I blow my account or I was not in profit. I understand. I have some weeks where I kind of play near where I started at the week, and I have some weeks where I go from a thousand to four thousand. And I'm like, man, this is gonna be a great withdrawal week, you know. But I'm just telling you guys, you have to be patient. That's how you have to play it. If you start with a higher account balance, you have the potential to make more. If you start with a lower account balance, you have to be even more disciplined. So it just depends on what type of mindset that you have and what type of discipline training that you might need. If you're a person and you know, hey, money is not a thing. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm not going to blow it. Cool. But if you're a person where that hundred dollars is coming out your rent, hey, you know, you, you have more pressure on your emotional content. Like you, that, that's one thing that you have to keep up with your emotional awareness. How do you feel when you trade? If you come to this market desperate, it is desperately going to beat you. It is desperately going to beat you. So that's something that I want you to know. So our Facebook trade was a clear. I'm going to put this other trade back on the screen. We have one more. We have one more trade up here. I know it dropped. It went ahead and it doji. It gave us a doji and it turned. So it did respect that zone. We have one minute left. It's still by our entry, it's putting us out of profit now. So you, I, I want you guys to notice also how the market is breathing too. It's not always just going to be pretty. You know, the, yes, this trade right here, this was a beautiful trade right here. It never came back. Right here, it's struggling a little bit. It's struggling a little bit. So your trades, don't be afraid of the way the market is moving. You know, it's not always going to be pretty turned. Sometimes you can get spiked. It's, it's no big deal, man. All we're doing is we're finding the zones. We're finding the setups and we're taking them. And that, that's all we're doing. You know, if we take a couple setups in a row that didn't turn out right, no problem. We can hop in our demo for a little bit, refine what we're looking for, and you're just going to get better and better and better. And you'll have situations that you like and you'll have situations that you don't like. Now, I do think this is going to spike up because that's not supposed to be down there. We got uh, 12 seconds on this trade, 23 seconds on the candle. Usually about halfway through, especially if it's doji and it's supposed to go up. Oh, yeah, this is showing out, though. OK, so this one right here spiked this out. Let's see how the candle closes, though. Let's see how it closes. It's still trying to push down, playing in this zone, playing in this zone. Look at that. Three seconds right here. Hmm. Nasty. Doesn't matter. We got some clears today. We got some spike outs today. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. It's all good. So pretty much that's how you identify the zone, guys. I do think that this is a reliable zone, though. It's just taking a little minute to take off, but we're going to see. So that's how you find the zones. That's how you find your setups. It's OK to to jump to the 10 minute if you don't see enough information. Remember, look left to see right. It's OK to do that. And pretty much you just you take the trades off the zones where your indicators line up. You get the you get the identified um, doji or, or the momentum change in your candles and you take that. Now, look at this. You see this? It took a little minute for this to kind of go ahead and drop. So looking for the higher entry points is key, you know, and the same thing at the bottom. Looking for the lower entry points is key. So um, just keep that in mind when you're trading. Be patient and you will start to see things happen over and over and that account will grow. But I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. I hope that you're getting value. I am not trying to be, um, you know, or I'm not trying to tell you that trading is easy or to tell you that trading doesn't take effort or skill because it does. But half of the battle is going to be your mental. The other half of the battle is going to be waiting on the setup. All right. So if you do that, you should be in profits this week. I will catch you guys on the next video. Go get your bag.